What's up, Kim peeps? What in the heck are we gonna do in this video? We are going to compare and contrast a voltaic cell with an electrolytic cell. What's the same, what's different? Breaking it down as always, we are going to one, define electrolytic cell. What the heck is it? And then number two, we are going to compare and contrast a voltaic cell with an electrolytic cell. So we already know what a voltaic cell is. We're gonna define what the heck an electrolytic cell is and then compare and contrast the two. So exciting. First of all, we've been talking about voltaic cells as these spontaneous reactions. Well. With electrolytic cells, we are gonna essentially think about reversing that direction by applying an electrical current to the input of electrical energy, forcing it back the other way. Now, electrolysis is the process of using electrical energy to break a compound apart. Derived from the Greek word lysis, meaning to break it up, electrolysis, very originally then, is what occurs in electrolytic cells. So, let's define an electrolytic cell. It is a non-spontaneous electrochemical cell that undergoes a redox reaction only when an electrical current is applied. So let's take a quick moment and stare at the image on your screen or in your notes to think about what we already understand from voltaic cells and think about how an electrolytic cell is different. Couple things to remember here, a non-spontaneous process requires an input of energy in order to proceed and recognize that the College Board is really looking for thermodynamically unfavorable when we're talking about something that's non-spontaneous. In an electrolytic cell, recognize that our anode is still gonna be the location where oxidation will occur, the cathode is still gonna be the location where reduction will occur. However, in electrolytic cells, our cell potentials are gonna be negative and our delta G values will therefore be positive. So, take a quick moment and stare at that image in your notes or on the screen. Think about what we already know with a voltaic cell, a spontaneous redox reaction that requires no input of energy. The electrons flow from the anode to the cathode. In an electrolytic cell, the big difference here is essentially we are reversing a spontaneous reaction, forcing it to go in the non-spontaneous or thermodynamically unfavored direction. And the only way we're able to do that is by inputting a source of electrical energy. So let's take a quick look at an example that will help clarify the differences between the two. What voltage is necessary to force the following electrolysis reaction to occur. Use the following information from a list of standard reduction potentials. All right, as I jump in and take a closer look at this reaction, let's assign some oxidation states to help us better understand which thing is being oxidized and which thing is being reduced as the reaction is written. Notice that the copper two ion goes from plus two to zero. It is being reduced. So I'm gonna rewrite its half reaction exactly as I see it. Boom. And its reduction potential exactly as it appears. Now let's take a look at the iodide ion, going from the minus one oxidation state to the zero oxidation state. Recognize that that process is oxidation. And since we're given the reduction half reaction, I'm gonna flip this reaction, boom, and therefore flip the sign of the reduction potential to give me the oxidation potential for that reaction. Now, when I combine these two half reactions, notice my electrons cancel, and I end up with the overall reaction that I initially started with. But what's going on with my cell potential? This is what we really wanna focus on in this example. When I add my reduction potential and oxidation potential together, positive 0 0.34 plus negative 0 0.54, I end up with a cell potential of negative 0 0.20 volts. As you focus on the sign of this cell potential with electrolytic cells, we are going to expect a negative voltage. In fact, that's the minimum voltage that we're gonna to have to apply to this electrolytic cell in order to get this reaction to occur. So before we go, I'm just gonna encourage you to come back to this image, take a look at the one that's in your notes. It's identical to what you have on the screen here. Maybe even make it the background on your phone so that every time you use it, you're thinking to yourself, hmm, What's the difference between voltaic and electrolytic cells? All right, and that is it. As always, check out the info beneath the video for those references.